Since about September 20th, we've seen some active weather, especially in southern and western Europe, as multiple low-pressure systems brought rounds of heavy rainfall and isolated instances of severe weather, even including a couple tornadoes in the United Kingdom. If you recall, this series of low-pressure systems arrived after much of Europe experienced some calmer conditions under a large anticyclone. Now, as September ends and we look ahead to October, I'm keeping an eye on a few things which could cause some disruption. All of the latest information is coming up in today's forecast, so let's get started. The picture below was taken in New York, United States back in July, and it's brought to you by another weather enthusiast who goes by Mr. Storm here on YouTube. Make sure you show him some support by subscribing to his channel if you're interested in weather reports focusing on the United States, and the link has been provided in the description. Speaking of the U.S., Major Hurricane Helene's impact across the southeast proved to be extremely destructive and even historic. Helene gained her name on September 24th in the Western Caribbean and only intensified in the days ahead. By Thursday, September 26th, Helene rapidly intensified to a Category 4 hurricane prior to landfall on Florida's Big Bend. Of course, this created extremely dangerous conditions along the coast, especially with the extraordinary storm surge which occurred, but Helene was also very large in size and moving abnormally quickly. Helene's large size allowed the impacts to spread hundreds of kilometers from the center, while the fast forward motion kept the storm much stronger further inland, producing hurricane force wind gusts in places that shouldn't experience such conditions. Outside of the storm surge and wind aspect, Helene also produced extreme rainfall along its path, especially in portions of Georgia and the Carolinas, resulting in historic and devastating flooding across the southern Appalachian Mountains. Helene is undoubtedly going down in record books for a number of reasons, and the unprecedented impact of this storm will be remembered by millions across the southeastern United States. Because of that, there's just so much more to say about Helene, but let's now take some time to talk about what else is going on in the Atlantic. At the 9am GMT update, Isaac was holding on to tropical storm status with sustained winds of 65 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 975 millibars. I was briefly intrigued by this system last week as many weather models suggested a trajectory towards Europe, but they trended away from that idea relatively quickly, and Isaac will remain a fish storm, also known as a tropical system which doesn't really have an impact on anyone, except for the fish. We also have Tropical Depression Joyce in the middle of nowhere with sustained winds of 35 miles per hour and a minimum central pressure of 1,006 millibars. This will also be a fish storm for the remainder of its lifespan, which won't be for much longer since dry air and wind shears impacting the storm as we speak. With that said, Joyce will likely be history by tomorrow. And lastly, Tropical Depression 12 just received the name Kirk as I edit this video, and it will likely become our next major hurricane by Friday or Saturday. Model guidance is in agreement that it will take a northward turn well before it poses a direct threat to the Caribbean or North America, but I would still watch out for impacts in the Asotish Islands and perhaps Western Europe down the line, especially if it transitions to a powerful extratropical cyclone. In addition, two other areas are being monitored for further development. One of them is actually heading towards the Gulf of Mexico, and as you can imagine, this is raising a lot of questions, especially in light of Hurricane Helene's major impacts. Personally, I don't see anywhere near as much potential with this system as I did with Helene, but I won't entirely rule out the possibility of some impacts of the U.S. Gulf Coast. The second one is located just off the African coast and was recently tagged as an area of interest. A couple of the main stories, at least through the middle of the week, are already here, one of which is this low-pressure system which arrived yesterday, and it's exiting England as of Monday afternoon. Also, some moderate to heavy rainfall which swept across some of the Balkan countries on Sunday has since moved off into the Black Sea, bringing more rain and storms to Turkey. In northwestern Europe, the center of low pressure has weakened as it passed through southern England, but once it emerges over the North Sea and approaches the Netherlands today, it looks like the system will try to re-intensify somewhat, bringing bouts of heavy rainfall and windy conditions to the Benelux countries and Germany by Tuesday. Around the Black Sea, sufficient cape is in place over northern and southern Turkey, so I wouldn't be surprised to see some severe thunderstorm activity today and tomorrow before this disappears into Caucasia by midweek. Those entities will be our focus for at least the next couple of days, but let's rewind this back to Monday. 
Watch as this area of rainfall sneaks into France before quickly sliding under the low pressure system spinning over the Benelux and Germany. On Tuesday afternoon and evening it will cross the Alps, affecting northern Italy, Austria, Slovenia and Croatia. The heavy rain will continue to spread further south and east going into Wednesday, when another similar looking system cuts through Iberia and the Balearic Islands. Before long, this new rainmaker will meet the other one working its way through the Adriatic Sea, ultimately joining forces and prolonging this episode of rainfall through Friday and even Saturday across Albania, Montenegro and northern Greece. Through next Monday, rainfall should be above average in parts of the Balkans, Turkey, northwestern Iberia and Italy. Then, drier than average conditions can be expected in Iceland, Scotland, the Nordic and Baltic countries, much of France and Iberia, western Russia, and northern Africa. Here's the rainfall accumulation forecast for the next five days, and you'll notice some potentially concerning numbers in Turkey, Slovenia, Montenegro, and Albania. Those are the places I'm most concerned with due to the flood risk, so I recommend keeping an eye on the weather conditions if you live in those areas, particularly along the Adriatic Sea. Once again, severe thunderstorms won't be a major or widespread threat in Europe this week, and that can be partially attributed to the cooler air mass currently in place. Even still, I can't rule out some severe weather activity closer to the warm waters of the Mediterranean and Black Sea, including parts of Turkey, the southern Balkans, and Italy. The temperature trend also looks similar to what we've seen for a while now, with the east remaining warmer and the west experiencing cooler conditions. Very warm weather will remain in much of Russia and to neighboring portions of Ukraine, Belarus, and Kazakhstan. I think that's going to be all for this video, so as always, make sure you stay tuned for more updates on European weather and drop a like on this one if you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.